So, um, we're going to get started. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave you here to lift some floorboards whilst I shoot off down the road to TLC. And... Is this that one? Is that or is that one? It's the one of the lamp post because I reversed into it last time. But if it is that one, there's a car on the drive, which is a little bit peculiar. And if that is the case, then what the fuck am I going to do? Because I haven't got a permit. How long? Eight foot? I can't park here at all. What the fuck? Can you imagine if it was actually, like, not even anyone you knew? Mm. Like, someone just knew that the house wasn't occupied. So the naughty little fuckers have just decided to park on their drive. Like the neighbour or something. The GoPro's not working, so I'm going to try and do this all on my phone. The, um, I don't know if you can help the... When you have a GoPro, there's a little portion that goes under it if you want to use it for audio. It used to work fine. Um, for some strange reason. I don't know if it's the mic, the lead from the mic to this little portion that goes under the GoPro, or maybe even the GoPro. I don't know. So one of, the, one of these three or four things is broken. I have to do some trial and error to try and fix it. Morning. <laughs> it's a tea bag. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, anyway, back to the job. We're going to be doing some um, remedial works, and it's like a kitchen refurb, which isn't getting done today. We're just we're here for. I'm, I've got a nip off halfway through the day, but we're here for the majority of the day. We're going to try and do some remedial from a recent EICI I've done. We're going to come back on Monday, start that. But for today, we're going to try and rectify a few problems. I think there was um, there's some earths missing from lights. There's a consumer unit to change. I'll tell you what, let me turn the camera around and have a walk around site. Now, this is the sort of stuff I find in here. Like, this is a bit of one mil twin and earth cable. Supply on the socket. Just, that was under the carpet originally. Slashed up to there. It's twin and earths flapping in the wind. It's DB, no RCD protection. I believe a lot of these are overrated as well. I know there's a 2.5 in this shower circuit, I know that. Earthing arrangement isn't brilliant either. No bonding. Oh, there's the one bad thing about using your phone is it zooms in and out all the fucking time. Um, all the fittings and fixtures are not in a great way. Um, we're going to be replacing everything, but not today. So this is all going to get decorated. That's upside down. That's another one actually, this has no earth. I remember he's got a red and black in there. I don't know if you can see that. He's got one brown and blue in there. Also using the blue as a switch line, it's a free plate system. But anyone would know if there's only one cable in there and only one cable in there, that's a brown and blue. That's a red and black. Somewhere there's a junction box. So Tommy's gonna to be upstairs lifting the floorboards trying to find out where all these bloody junction boxes are. Same over here, I think these have all got like just one cable in them, look, one out, that's all. One cable in there, one cable in there. Shambles in there. So we're just gonna try and tidy up a little bit. Can I show you something, Tommy? And it's not me willy. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna leave you this morning to lift some boards up and just in case you do nip a pipe. The stopcock is under there. Yeah? Yep. So I'll check that. That does go everywhere. So anything happens, run down here, turn the tap off, mm-hmm. and the water will go off. I might get the GoPro off and put him over there somewhere. Put him on a time lapse. If I need to talk, I'll use the phone. Um, a lot of these will need to be extended. Nice bit of trunk out the wall. Consumer unit. I'll bring the cable in up. New consumer unit. Bish bash bosh. Gas meter is going to be going back. The gas meter, for some strange reasons, sitting in the living room on the floor. I'm sure he's going to be going back here unless they're relocating that. I don't know. I'll, I'll bond that anyway. I'll leave loads of slack on it just in case they're moving it further back inside the, the cupboard. Okay. I would say that's about 316. 316. Alright, so if it was upstairs, 
All right. Can you see where the cables go down? Roughly. It's in between those two joists. About there, yeah? All right, so come over. Hold it there. We want, we want 316. Which is, oh God, I've passed it. 316 is that. There. All right. How many, how many floorboards along is it? That's that's ten, is it? Nine, yeah, ten. That's ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There. So this one didn't have an earth reading. But the earths are connected up. Is he done it on the sleeve? No, it's not on the sleeve. It's fucking weird, isn't it? Well, the earths are like they're in there, but. There's no earth reading at the light, so maybe it's on the light before. <laughs> Alright, I'll tell you what job's going to do. We're going to go downstairs, we're going to hang down the pendants, and we're going to bring these free plate cables out properly. Does that make sense? So, the original cables, these ones on this side, this one's actually labelled it. The ones on this side are actually going to come out the light. Alright, so we've only got one wire at the next one, but it, it could be a loop feed. There's no lamp in it before, so we didn't actually test how it was switched. Uh, Tommy, yeah. let me know if you can see that moving. No. Nothing, though. No? Hang on a sec. Yeah, you won't do because there's some bloody... Is that connections? <laughs> So um, here's the consumer unit, in case you were interested on what the inside looked like. Very nice. Very nice. Now look, here's that shower circuit I was talking about. Look, there's a... I can only imagine that's like a 6mm cable in there. It's got a little bit of a... It's got a 2.5. It's dogged in next to it. On a 32 amp. So I suppose if that was to supply a socket, you could almost say it's a, a spur, but it's still not very good, is it? Um... <laughs> yeah, that's all going in the fucking bin. So much for doing a time lapse. Um, okay, so I've got a bit of trunk on the wall. Put a little bit of a trunk and lid on there and I've cut a section that's gonna line up with that hole. I've marked up where my fixings are. I've double plugged it, which means I've put two plugs in the wall. One plug, it was a very deep hole, one plug, pushed it in with a screw, put another plug in there. So when I put my screw in, I've got a really good grip on that. It's gonna be all the way in the wall. Got about that almost, I don't know what that is. Two of them, was that like 80 mil? Is that like 40 maybe? Yeah, probably about 80 mil worth of plug in the wall and I've cut some lengths of conduit. I'm going to use some very girthy 100 mil screws to attach my board to the wall. And there you go. One board on the wall. Look, level's not even moving. Sorry, there's a rock. There's the old conduit fixings. Obviously, they are the same length as that is deep. So this sits on top of that as well. So there's no gap behind it. I cut the lid just a little bit bigger than the consumer unit so that I can, at a later date, if need be, get new cables in. Oh, look. I'll do that in a minute. There's one there as well. But yeah, so sort of, sort of future proof it so you can bring some new ones in, either side, bring them out here, in your breakers, bish bash bosh.
So this one here, which we cut the copper off of, is yeah. our switch line. Mm -hmm. So find the, the white out sheaf of that one. Yeah, go ahead. You've got him. Get the pen, and at the top of that cable, um, put S slash um, W on it, or S slash L. Measure twice, cut once, so just double check you've got that right. Yeah, and run your hand down the cable and just double check it is the switch line again, please, mate. Yeah? Yeah. You happy with it, yeah? Yeah. All right, I'm going to take your word for it. So what I want you to do is, um, I don't, when they've twisted all the earths together, I don't want that. Yeah. Literally, get the cutters, cut it here, mm -hmm. use my tool to strip them all back, yeah. get some insulation tape, tape them together at the top, mm -hmm. let a little bit of white out sheath go past the tape. Yeah. And it'll keep it all together and make it a lot easier to terminate. Terminate the pendant away from the ceiling, yeah, because it's only temporary. Yeah. We're going to swap them all later on once all the decorating's been done. Mm -hmm. But not only that, it allows us to push slack up. Yeah. So the next guy, well, I doubt there will be a next guy because I think we're sort of, <laughs> it's quite an old mm -hmm. um, generation of cable in here. I don't think we're going to get another use out of it, but... If this was a slightly newer house, the next guy would be able to have a little bit of slack in case he had to do something special with it. Mm -hmm. oh. Tommy's over here. He's going to attempt to do his first pendant. Mm -hmm. Just walked him through it. He's just marking up the switch line. And uh, so far I'm up to here at the board. It's the bit where it gets quite messy. So what I've done is originally this place only had one ring. I was going to give them a kitchen ring, which I, well, I still am going to do. As you can see, here's the kitchen ring there. But I, I found there was a twin and earth clip down here, which looks like it was part of the general ring circuit. Now, I'm chancing it here a little bit. I've snipped it in half. I've got both legs here. I'm kind of hoping that that's all upstairs, basically. I knew one leg went upstairs and then it came back down the other one. So long as they've done it in such a manner that it makes sense, there is a good chance that this is going to be the upstairs ring, which I'm going to join onto here in some sort of wago box just up here. some of the cabling that wasn't long enough to go into the board which wasn't much to be honest it was the um upstairs ring which i made upstairs ring goes into the board i've put some wagos in there or vagos uh and down here the lighting circuit i've had to incorporate that as well i was, I was going to try and do one of the massive vago box but that didn't quite work um I've left all the number of points completely blank in my circuit schedule so far because these keep changing. So um, yeah, I think I might have to reassess and retest this right at the very end. But um, yeah. Apologies for the uh, mess under there. It's it's just fucking everywhere. It's shit all under here. I think the um. I mean, maybe like the last person has done a bit of a refurbishment in this property. He's just, he's had the boards up, he's just swept everything underneath. But anyway, the um, thing I want to show you is, I should have really showed you when all the boards are up, but I've had Tommy go around putting some cleats in and some cable ties. This is the ground floor, by the way, just to keep the cables off the floor. Ah. Tommy wants the task. I want all this cabling completely removed because I've just been given the go-ahead we're gonna put some more lights up here we're gonna put some new ones we're gonna put one light here not that you have to worry about this right now we're gonna put another light there and we're gonna chuck a couple of lights down this alley we're definitely not gonna get this finished today we're gonna have to put another light here another one halfway down so we're gonna have to sort of 
run a cable underneath the floorboards in there. Luckily, the floorboards are up. Well, I was saying that the, the staircase is halfway down there, so I don't know if we're going to get past that. We'll probably have to try and position it above that window. That's the best we can do. Light there, light there, light there, light there. But as for you, mate, all you need to do, take down all this cable in, take down these two lights, take down that bulkhead, and there's a bulkhead right at the very end on that gate. If you take that down as well, mate, that'd be pucker. Well, that explains why I couldn't find where that was switched from. We're not going to worry about the sockets right now. We're going to mark out where the lights are going to go. So what we really want is this gap here, because we're going to put four spots and four spots. But the last thing you want to do is put a spot and have it overhanging the cupboard. So we're going, to, we're going to work it as if that was where the walls were. We're going to get that, and then we're going to do a quarter, half quarter measurement. So what I need to do is I need to subtract the depth of these units, which are normally about 600 deep. Okay, we've had a rethink about this. The sinks go in here. If we only position the lights down the centre, you're going to cast a shadow when you're washing up. There's also going to be no wall units here. There's going to be some under unit lighting on these cabinets. There's going to be no light here, there's going to be no light here, there's going to be no light on this section. What we're going to try and do is we're going to try and keep the light roughly quite close to the units so it's symmetrical. It's going to help you a little bit when you're looking in the cupboards. Plus, hopefully it shouldn't cast too much shadow when you're working here. It shouldn't cast too much shadow when you're working here. And you can have your breakfast and your coffee and you should be able to see what you're doing as well. We're going to probably try and keep it quite close to these units as well because when you keep lights close to the wall, it will wash the wall, make the room look brighter. A lot of people make the assumption that the more lights, the better. Yeah, that, that does kind of work to a certain degree, but if you used to put all the lights in the middle of the room, all you're going to do with a spotlight is light the floor up and no one sits there looking at the floor, they look at the walls. If the walls are bright, the room looks bright. Bish bash. All right, so we've pinged a couple of lines. I don't know if you can see that. Now, a lot of people use lasers. Lasers are puck, I do like a laser, especially if you're on a mark ceiling. But we've got to do multiple lines here, so I really like to use chalk lines. It's a bit old school, but the good thing about chalk line is, I'm not actually quite sure where these joists are. This up here is a flat roof. It's deep enough for a downlight, but it's a flat roof I can't get above. If I ping a line and I discover there's a joist nearby, I can use this line to keep measuring off to my new location. And that goes throughout the whole thing. It's a lot easier to sort of, you know, sort out a fuck up once you've pinged these chalk lines on the ceiling than it is if you've got a laser. Plus, you'd need multiple lasers to do multiple lines. I've, I've, I'm going to have these two lines. I'm going to have a line down there, another line, another line, and another line. All right, so another thing. A lot of people just keep trying to measure off the wall sometimes when they're doing downlights. Downside of that, if it's an old wall, if it's not dot and dab, it's been plastered by hand, chances are that's not straight. So. Even though to the eye, when you're looking at the wall, it don't look like it's pissed. When you stand here and you look at your downlights, you will see just how pissed that wall is because your lights will be like that. So I just found this in this ceiling. It's just that sticking out originally. It makes a little bit more sense. I can work out why there's only one wire here and one wire sticking out over there. Fortunately, all this is gone now. It used to be fed off of a few spur down there, which fed the switch and then fed all these lights. But that's dead now. We're gonna have a designated kitchen lighting circuit that we've run from the fuse board. So this can all get cut out. I'm just trying to work out which way the joists go so we can put our down lights in. What I want you to do is pull the tape measure out. Now straighten that arm. So your right hand, keep it on the end. All right, let's start again because you look like you're playing the guitar. All right, where is one meter? All right, go back a little bit further with this one. Uh, one meter is here. So is that fully extended? One meter is just just here. Whenever you need to get cable phone, if I say get like a couple of meters, just pull two lengths. They're that long. 
Tell me what you know. Where did you hide the diamonds? Okay, so we've got to the point now where I need to put some sockets in. Sorry about all the noise outside, the gardeners are in. Having a good old grind out there. Um, what I do is I like to draw. I like to draw the kitchen. So as you can see, I've started to put marks where the units are. There's one there. There's a 600 unit here. What I'm going to do is going to get a level and draw lines down the wall where all the units are. Once I've drawn where the units are, it's a lot easier to work out where sockets need to go, spurs, um, you know, maybe sockets behind appliances and then the spurs above them. It's, I find it a lot easier and there's less chances of making mistakes if you draw it all out first. I think I'm annoying Tommy because, oh that works, have a look, it came straight out. It's gone four o'clock, it's Friday, I was supposed to be packing up and uh, every time he puts something away, I'll, I'll get it back out again. <laughs> All right, so it's the end of the day. We're the only fuckers here now. Everyone's gone home, it's Friday. It's gone four, I don't even know what time is now. Cool, past four, I'll pass four. Um, we're going to clear off as well. Before I do, I'll whiz around and I'll just show you what we've managed to get done in a day and two half days. This is this was an afternoon, a couple of days we did an afternoon, and I'm fairly certain we did a full day the day before that, so two days. All right, so uh, let's start over here. <laughs> He's a good lad, isn't he? Sweeping up. Uh, this, this was an absolute fucking full of shit down here and he's, Tommy's cleaned all that up for us. He cleaned up over here and then I chased that over here. I thought it was crap again. Sorry Tommy. Right, so our cables come through the wall over here. Then we've come up. This Our ring starts here and he goes over there, over there, over there, over there. And over here, that's our kitchen ring sorted. Um, there's There's a lot of... This was where the old box used to be, and obviously we've moved it because this was a different height. I mean, it was it was a nightmare. All the boxes were different heights. But there's a, a lot of damage, so there's there's one there. As you can see, we've incorporated conduit. This is the first time I've used conduit. I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, box there. And again, you, see, you can see here we've moved this box. I've tried to keep them all uniform, the same distance off the windows. I thought that would look quite nice. And again, we've done it here. As you can see, I've written keep because that was an existing box. We've made it a little bit deeper. We've full, used 47 mil boxes just because I imagine it's gonna be like a lot of flat plate stuff going in here, maybe some USB sockets. Uh, that's the old chase, we put a chase there. That was a new one, that was all right. That's a nice one, like I said, the old socket there. Holes all over the place here. This used to be a doorway. And it's like, it's a, it's a mess, it's like, two or three layers of plasterboard, thick bonding. This this feels quite damp as well. I don't know why, but yeah, we need to try and make that good. Um, I tell you what, I'd like to say as well, like, everything's, it's not everything's a perfect world, yeah? And shit happens. And I'll, I'll show you some of the problems we've had. So for starters, I, I made a mistake. I wasn't really thinking of the big picture. I was just doing one job at a time. I put this socket here. And I mean, I'm, I'm sort of limited to how far that way I can go because of the oven. And because of that, I put the, I thought it'd be nice to have the oven out isolator next to the oven. And then I put the grid switch here. And then I looked at it and I thought, that's, that's a grid switch. And it goes to socket and then it goes back up to that. That just looks crap. So I've moved this. I was quite fortunate. I believe this bit here used to be a window. And so because of that, that the batten, there was a nice piece of batten there. So I actually managed to put that on the batten and I've scratched it as well so that when I bond it it should stick but yeah I've, I've I moved my socket over it was like a little bit of a last minute thing another problem that I had was this is my cooker switch now I didn't actually run a six mil cable all the way back to the board 
I went on the assumption, and you shouldn't go on the assumption, but I went on the assumption that the cooker cable here could be rescued. And um, here he is here. Don't worry, he's dead. He's off in the board. Um, that's how long he is. So I'm going to have to extend it. And I've chosen to try and do it underneath the kickboards. I'm going to put it in a 32 amp junction box, maybe one of those Hager maintenance free junction boxes. And I'll stick it under the kickboard just so it is accessible. And here's the 6mm cable I'm going to tie onto. So that'll be in there. Um, is there any other problems you've come against? I'll tell you another mistake I've made. Here you go. So, hang on, so where's my pencil? Because I need to write this down before I forget. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, right, so we've got a wine fridge. Uh, there you go. Not too bad for a left hand. <laughs> um, the mistake I made was I was trying to work out how many appliances I had so I could do my grid switches. Now, straight away, obviously, I'm not going to put the oven on it because that's going to go on somewhere between a 32, 40 or 45 amp isolator. That'll be something separate. The dishwasher and washing machine, the customer said to me, um, the plug sockets won't fit behind them. They're, the way the washing machine and dishwasher are, there's no room behind them. So I can't put a plug socket behind them. But they do share a cupboard between them. And it is possible to put a socket in there. Can I do that? And I thought, yeah, it's fine. I just spun a circle around it. I'll make that spur. So I ran a cable over to it. But I didn't think of the fact that these are really heavy load machines. I mean, either of them, they're going to be somewhere between 10 and 13 amps each if they don't have a hot water supply. If they've only just been running cold, they're going to want to sort of heat the water up. There'll be an element in them. So they'll be, they might be 13 each, which is going to make them 26 amps when they're both on. And if I've only put a 20 amp ice, um, 20 amp double pole switch there, that's going to get hot. So what I'm going to have to do is maybe incorporate that in the ring and not put an isolator over there. To be fair, if they're in a cupboard, they don't need to be isolated over there. So I will only have a one, two, three, four, five. That's fine. I've got, I can put five of them in there. I'll be parking. I'll still have a spare. I'll tell you one thing I've noticed, yeah. That's an LED. And I'm not really getting much flicker off of it, am I? It's not too bad, is it? Keep it in my head on it, but it's not too bad. Look at the dust in the air. So, anyway, just before we leave, I just wanted to talk about this. You see here, I've used some conduit, and I don't normally do that. I normally use oval conduit or capping. I don't normally use standard conduit, and I've actually gone for 25 mil, which is slightly bigger. Um, before you say it, chaps, yeah, I know you're supposed to use a female adapter. I asked for female adapters. I opened the bag, and they were full of male adapters. Um, you know, a bit too late now. I'll put them in anyway. Hopefully the sockets still go on. But anyway, I don't normally do that. And I'll, I'll tell you, what, I'm going to start at the beginning. When I was an apprentice, we didn't use any of this. And that was the way I was trained. We used to, we didn't grind the chases. We used to get a chisel bit in an SDS drill. And we would actually chisel the whole chase out. You'd have blisters on your hands. It was horrible. But that's the way we used to chase. Um, and for years, I never questioned it, and that's what I used to do. And we would just clip the cables down there. I'll be honest, we did sometimes put a bit of bonding in there, but we would just clip the cables, we'd put grommets in, we'd chisel it all out. None of this grinding and using capping and that. And I never questioned it. And it's not till later on in my career that I started seeing other people doing things, and I realised that just because someone's taught you a certain way doesn't mean it's gospel, and that's the only way of doing it. And I've gone through stages of using capping. I've gone through stages of using oval conduit, as you've seen in previous videos. And I've, you know, now I'm using the actual conduit, which I think is fantastic. It's, I mean, it actually fits in the box perfectly. When you use the oval conduit, yeah, it's great. It protects the cables. But when you actually get to the grommet, it's really hard to pull out. So I'm going to try where I can. I'm not going to promise I'm going to do it all the time. But when it's practical to do the chases slightly deeper, to incorporate the conduit, I will do that. But um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna try and do it more often. And as you can see, this was breeze blocks. So it wasn't too bad either. Oh, 
You happy? Everything's locked here. Sweet. All right, chaps. That's us done for the day. Maybe we'll see you next week. <laughs> or not. <laughs> with my track record of doing videos. Thanks for watching. Watch another. Subscribe. Comments down below.